In a first for Australia, NASA has launched a rocket from a remote part of the Northern Territory. This all happened overnight. Five, four, three, two, one. Oh! Yeah! Yes! We're certainly feeling that here this morning. Despite a short delay, the rocket was launched successfully, disappearing from view within seconds. That was expected. It's the first of three NASA-designed rockets to take off from the Northern Territory, all intended to not enter orbit but remain in the Southern Hemisphere. And joining us live now is the CEO of Equatorial Launch Australia, Michael Jones. He's there for us at, uh, from the scene this morning. Michael, congratulations to you. How do you sum up the launch? Yeah, thanks very much. You know, um, yeah, as you said, despite the short delays, which we were holding for the wind, the rocket, when it launches, it is at its most vulnerable uh, very shortly after it leaves the launch rail. And so for safety reasons, we decide to hold for, uh, for a few short periods and we reset the countdown at three minutes, I think three or four times. But it was a real success. We got the data that we wanted for the uh, scientific clients. The uh, launch um, went well, the rocket performed as uh, desired, et cetera. And for us, it's a momentous occasion. And so we're really happy and really relieved as well as, you know, it was pretty exciting. I think every rocket launch is pretty exciting when you hear Everybody was surprised at how bright it was, how loud it was. So, uh, and it's a very, very fast rocket. As you said, it disappears into the atmosphere very, very quickly. So where is it now? Um, it only took um, a little over sort of 20 to 30 minutes before the payload returns to Earth. It does its job in space very quickly and then intentionally we slow it down and bring it back. So the nose cone, the second stage engine, and the payload all come back together into our atmosphere. The payload is then slowed down so that it gets a nice gentle landing because we have to recover the data out of that and that's mm. the main part of the mission. So it comes back under parachute. So that's about 300 kilometres to the south of where I am now and we have a recovery team via helicopter and the ground using the local uh, Aboriginal people to assist us. The traditional owner, traditional owner ranger groups who are down south um, have been really instrumental in uh, helping us recover the payloads and, and we'll continue to do that for the next three missions. So other than the delay, did, did the rest of the mission or launch go perfectly? Did it, did it all go as well as it could? Yeah, no, absolutely. Went went flawlessly. The only issue was that each time we got it, we have a requirement in Australia. It's, it's slightly different to NASA's requirement, but for us, we have wind limits and, and it's mostly in the oscillation of the wind. So each time that happened, we just called a halt. We reset the, the countdown clock at three minutes. And the reason for that is that in the last 90 seconds of the countdown, there is a quite a number of checks um, and final sign-offs to say we're good to go for launch. And, mm. you know, at one stage, we got down to eight seconds before we had to reset. So, uh, you know, <laughs> there was a little bit of a, yeah. you know, waiting for it to go. But, uh, yeah, we finally got it and, and it went really well. So... Uh, very, very happy for that. No, the, the pictures are fantastic, uh, Michael. And uh, just, just for our viewers who, who may well just be coming across the story now, what's the point of the launch? What, what do you want to learn? Yeah, so there are three different missions we're doing. The first one that just went uh, last night um, is using an X-ray telescope that comes out of the, uh, the body of the rocket. And it was looking at um, atmospheric and um, galactic sort of phenomena surrounding some of our nearest stars. And they're looking at using an, an X-ray telescope. So they were looking at Alpha Centauri and its subset stars of um, Alpha and Bravo, which are 430 million light years away. So they're a long way away. And so they need this very specialised equipment, which we cryogenically cooled with liquid helium um, it gets to a point of, you know, about minus 270 degrees. Um, and that, that allows that it in the dark in the Southern Hemisphere because some of these phenomena can only be seen from the Southern Hemisphere. So that's the point of why NASA was here to conduct those experiments on behalf of a number of universities out of the United States. So the University of Wisconsin and the next ones are coming out of the University of Colorado. So thumbs up from, uh, from the NASA chiefs. Oh, very much so. So they were happy, uh, we're happy. It's been a long collaboration with us. And this is, uh, you know, there's been a lot of planning and a lot of logistics in the making. 
But, you know, we've achieved the mission and can say that we've done, you know, the first commercial space launch out of Australia. So wow. tick that box and now we move on to the next one. On to the next. Just quickly, when's the next one? Uh, 4th of July. Fourth um, of I July. think it's 8.27. Don't quote me on that, but I think it's yep. 8.27, so a little bit earlier. Michael, congratulations. Well done to you and the team. Fantastic achievement. We'll talk to you uh, Thanks, for the Mike. next one too. Thanks Hopefully much. that one is just as successful.